we are live. That's what they say. Usually, these YouTube type things, they start out with like, what's up, or what's up, YouTubers, or something <laughs> like that, right? That's it, so anyway, but we'll try not to be that corny, anyway, dynamic music in the background, whatever, but. All right, well, let's pray and we'll begin. Father, we ask your blessing on our class time today. We thank you that you do hold us fast and that when you, uh, those whom you've called to yourself, you, you elected in eternity past, that you will uh, see us through faithfully to the end, that we can never fall away from you. And so we thank you for this great salvation and we ask that you would use your word to uh, challenge us and convict us, encourage us, and that you would use it in all the ways that uh, it would do its work in us. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, a couple of uh, preliminaries. I wanted to show you um, if I can do this without losing something. So, you know, we are putting the Sunday school class and see Sunday school going on sermon audio is it I can't remember yeah. Sunday school class the worship service and um, the midweek Bible study we're putting them all on they're on Facebook they're on sermon audio and they're on um, YouTube as well and and in regard to sermon audio you know one of the things that we, we started doing the live stream on Sermon Audio as well, because Sermon Audio is a, uh, well, it's, it's a Christian, what do you call it? Ne not a network, but platform, platform whatever it is. So, um, and you, you know, we want to, we appreciate it because we want to stay in place there because, um, uh, you know, Facebook, those places, they could decide you guys aren't politically correct, right? And, uh, and you know, in all the, you know what that means. So if any of those Facebookers are listening, so I just, you know, no, we're not, we're not. So there you are. But, uh, but anyway, but uh, so this is a, a, another, another platform to, to use. But anyway, we've been with Sermon Audio, you know, for years. And uh, every month they send us a statistics report. Uh, which is pretty kind of cool to to look at. So like for the month of April, there were 1,765 total plays of our videos and whatever audios that we, we put out there. They, they break it down in 34 different countries. So, um, and they give you the, the ones that are like, they give you some stats on individual messages but like here's the international map I don't know if you can see this very well kind of small but okay so in the US there was 1352 views um, in uh, United Kingdom 139 80 in Canada 73 in Australia and it just kind of goes down you know some of these only have one but it is interesting it's like Poland Somebody in Poland, somebody in Zambia, mm -hmm. Indonesia, um, Croatia, and, and Russia is one. Now check this out. I just had a text from our son, Kenny. And he said, we met some Russian women last night, and one of them mentioned that she'd recently lost her 15-year-old son to cancer. She started talking to us about Christ and her faith, I brought up Spurgeon and Lloyd Jones to her, and she said she she knows both of them, and had a Spurgeon book. So I told her about uh, Christ Reformation Church and the YouTube channel and the blog. So, so it really is um, a what do you want to call this? I, you, this stuff is, as well as Astrid was mentioned, you know, the internet can be used and is used for all kinds of evil. But at the same time, you, know, you, you have to say, this is the hand of God. I, I mean, it, it has to be that um, our little place, like right now, right now, we're worldwide, okay? So there, 
which is just kind of blows you away some that you have that uh, and this has all happened within the last decade really largely it's not so um, anyway that's each month we get a report like that and it, it's always up in in those kind of in those kind of numbers so um, and that's really encouraging to know and uh, so let's go back here to Second Kings, and I think that's all the... Oh, here's another one. Check this out. So we got this card in the mail from a lady named Kathleen. She said, Dear Pastor Crippen, thank you for the wonderful teaching that you've brought on Sermon Audio. I've been richly blessed by the word that, that you teach. So, see, there's... That's like the third person this week that I've talked to from Tennessee. So the Austins are back there, and the they're probably listening to us right now. Hello, Austins. And uh, they're there, and um, another friend of, no, there's four. There's four different ones that, through the abuse ministry and, and then online, that, that are, um, the Austins are part of our church, and, and then other people that are they're hearing too. So anyway... Pretty neat stuff. Um, this is, we, we just kind of introduced last week the reign of Hezekiah. And uh, by, the, by the way, somebody has to make a comment with the microphone online. Just something. I mean, say, you got to say something at some point because Jessica figured out the microphone. And so everything, up to this point when you were holding the microphone, it wasn't coming through, so but she figured it out. It's it's new equipment, and there's always these little glitches. So anyway, if somebody you get some revelation that you just have to share, then let us know. So all right, so we started um, with King Hezekiah, the account of Hezekiah uh, reigning as king in Judah, southern kingdom, is given in Second Kings chapters eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Hezekiah was a remarkable man. You, um, and, and you begin to see now as we've been going through this study in the Old Testament, there are people in the Old Testament that may, maybe you either haven't ever thought about or maybe you didn't even know about them really, uh, but we've met several. Uh, uh, King Josiah, who effected all kinds of reforms in, uh, in Judah. Uh, now Hezekiah. And then last week, you know, we talked about flip-floppy King Joash and the uh, priest. Now I said Jehoiakim and Jehoiakim mixed up. Or, anyway, anyway, that priest, right? He was that, um, that lived till he was 130 years old and he was a godly man and he kept the king on track until he died and then so there's there's people like that back here that are part of God's remnant and uh, and Hezekiah is another one he is Hezekiah is the son of Ahaz who was also a king of Judah and Ahaz was a wicked man a very wicked man we're reminded again then, and you saw it in the case of King Josiah, that this interesting dynamic that and a very, very faithful, godly man can come from a very, very wicked and ungodly father, which tells us this is, this is the Lord's hand, this is his doing, and... Uh, and Hezekiah is, it's amazing what Hezekiah does here. Um, he was 25 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother name, mother's name was Avi, the daughter of Zechariah. And, and he, here's these wonderful words. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David, his father, had done. The Lord was with him. Wherever he went out, he prospered. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and would not serve him. Okay, so now that we mentioned the king of Assyria, let's put it in chronological perspective here. 
So Hezekiah is king of Judah, the southern kingdom. Um, and the northern kingdom, Israel, has been wiped out, right? It's, 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 get this right. I, I, I get confused on the chronology here because we're doing Jeremiah the same time as we're doing Second Kings here, whatever. But let's see. So if it hasn't come down yet, it, it will. I think, I think it had. Maybe at the end of uh, 17. Um, yeah, the fall of Israel. So, so the northern kingdom is gone. Assyria is still the world kingdom, okay? It's still the leading uh, empire. And so right now, Assyria is what Hezekiah is dealing with, as, as we'll see. Now, Hezekiah came in time, chronologically, he came before Jeremiah, right? Because as you know from our study of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the enemy world power that Jeremiah is dealing with is Babylon. And that's because Babylon conquered Assyria between the time of Hezekiah and between the time of Jeremiah. But Hezekiah, as you'll see here, he lived during the time of Isaiah the prophet. Okay? Isaiah the son of Amos. So, um, the Lord was with him. Wherever he went out, he prospered. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and would not serve him. There's a chapter in the history book that most of you have called The Days of, Hezek of Isaiah. And if you read that chapter, it gives a lot of the world scene background as to what, as to what is, is going on here. Um, he struck down, Hezekiah struck down the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory from watchtower to fortified city. In the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of, of Israel, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end, see, it's flipped back to the northern kingdom. Samaria is the capital. At the end of three years, he took it. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, which was the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. So sometimes this account is got going, you know, you saw sometimes you watch a movie and you're going, wait a minute, is this a flashback, right? Well, that's what that just was. That was a flashback there, okay. The king of Assyria carried the Israelites away to Assyria and put them in Hala on the Haber River, the Rizr of Gozen, in the cities of the Medes. Because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant, even all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, they neither listened nor obeyed. Now, Sennacherib is a, the king of Assyria at that time, okay? In the 14th year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. And I think I read here in this book, the Assyrian king moved against Judah. In his records, Sennacherib boasts that he took 46 fortified cities and deported their people. Only Jerusalem was left, and the Assyrian armies surrounded the holy city. And so that's, what, that's what's happening here. Um, and Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I've done wrong, withdraw from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will bear. And the king of Assyria required of Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. At that time, Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the doorpost that Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. Now, this, this account here, this little incident here, where Hezekiah says to, you know, they've got the city surrounded, and he says, I've done wrong, withdraw from me. Um, Hezekiah has caught a lot of critical flack for that 
And it does surprise you a, a little bit. And yet, um, and yet we've just seen the scripture's description of Hezekiah is that he was a godly man. And so I don't, I don't think the scripture is condemning here. I mean, all of this stuff is happening as a result of the sins of evil king, his father and others before him. And here he is having to deal with it. It may well be, in fact, it probably is that his course of action here was wisdom. You know, it was, it was, it was wise. And uh, I think old, good old Matthew Henry would disagree with me on that there. But boy, you know, here's Assyria. And if you read about what the Assyrians did to the people that they conquered, uh, and, and they've, they've did city after city after city and your own land has come. You're like the last one left, right? And so this is what he did. The king of Assyria, so he, that's not, still not good enough for him, basically. We don't know how long this was later, but the king of Assyria sent the Tartan. It's a title of some kind. The Rabsaris and the Rabshaka with a great army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. When they arrived, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is on the highway to the washer's field and, and so forth. Now, there's one thing here that you see. Hezekiah, and we, we need to be wise to this in regard to evil. Hezekiah was able to kind of cut a deal with them and gave them the money, the gold, and so forth. And then apparently, apparently they departed. And when he first was first prime minister, you know, he'd been telling the nation, you people, you're disarming, you're pushing disarmament for Britain and France and everybody. Germany, behind the scenes, secretly, they're all the time, they're growing stronger and stronger and stronger until it was virtually too late. Nobody had listened to him. Well, he ultimately became prime minister when Hitler started taking Czechoslovakia and Poland and everything. But, um, so he comes, and then there's Lord Halifax. And he, Lord Halifax is still kind of a prime minister wannabe, but his platform was peace. We've got to cut a deal with Hitler. You know, we've got, we've got to do this because... What we want is, is peace. Now you have to cut the pacifists a little bit of slack in that just 20 years before they had gone through that horrible, <coughs> horrible World War I, right, slaughter. But nevertheless, they're being foolish here. And what, and what Churchill, you know, he went through a lot of turmoil, but he, he came to uh, the conclusion and he told Halifax and everybody else, um, he said, you cannot trust that man. You know, you're not, if you think that you can cut a deal with him, they, just forget it. You're not, you're not going, you're not going to be able to. Well, that's kind of what you see here. Here they are back again. The king of Assyria is back again and he sends his representatives. And uh, when they called for the king, there came out, Hezekiah didn't come out to him. There came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, Shebna the secretary, Joah the son of Asaph, the recorder. And the Rabshaka said to them, Say to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, On what do you rest this trust of yours? And the people of the city could hear him. Okay. Do you think that mere words... Now, now think of this. Think of this kind of stuff coming at you this is Satan talking. Okay? I mean, that's what this is, okay? Do you think that mere words are strategy and power for war? In whom do you now trust that you have rebelled against me? Behold, you're trusting now in Egypt that broken reed of a staff which will pierce the hand of any man who leans on it, such as Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God. Is it not he, now look at how cunning this is. Is it not he, the Lord your God, whose high places and altars 
Hezekiah has removed, saying to Judah and to Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Now, let's think about that verse for a minute. What is the conniving, deceiving wickedness that's going on here? If you want it, this is like somebody would do today in twisting the scripture, right? Twisting it. But what, um, what, what is his strategy? What, what, is it he's, what is he saying? What's he trying to say to them? Is it not he? If you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God. Well, is it not the Lord your God, whose high places and altars Hezekiah has removed, saying to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. He's separating the people from the king. He's what? Separating the people from the king. Yeah, Vicky said he's separating the people from, from the king. And what he's trying to do, by doing that, is to separate them from their faith in God. Right? Because that's where Hezekiah... And remember that. So Hezekiah had wiped out all of those idolatrous high places and altars as he's effecting reformation in the land. What is, um, what is Rabshakeh saying about that? About those altars and high places? What is he saying? That's where all the trouble's coming from. And why? That's where all their troubles coming from. But why? What? what why is he saying all their troubles coming from it? Well, he's he's trying to get them to doubt not only Hezekiah but God. And why would he say that they that Hezekiah has made them alienate God from them? Well, is he saying that those really are proper places of worship? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. See, see that? He's saying, oh yeah, you're trusting in the Lord? Well, guess what? Your king Hezekiah has alienated the Lord, your God, from you because he, had, he went through and, and he wiped out those high places and altars. And so what he's saying is that was, those were proper places to worship God. See, see how he's twisting it and distorting it. And, and when we talk about the evil that wicked people do in the church, in the, you know, your standard that we all know, the domestic abuser, Christian kind of person, that's exactly the kind of mind games. That's what he's doing. This is mind game stuff. Just twist it. You know, um, when in reality, what's the truth? Those weren't places of worship to God. They were worship of idols. Furthermore, when Hezekiah says, you shall worship before this altar, and he means this altar alone in the temple in Jerusalem, he is saying, they were only supposed to worship at the temple in Jerusalem because of, all this bent toward idolatry, see. So, so you see how he's he's twisting it, and as Vicky said, he's trying to turn them against um, uh, against Hezekiah. So, okay, here we go. Come now, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you two thousand horses if you're able on your part to set riders on them. How then can you repulse a single captain among the least of my master's servants when you trust in Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Moreover, is it without the Lord that I have come up against this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. All right, here again. What's he saying? What's he saying here in verse eight, uh, 25? He lied. What's that? I think he lied. Oh, he's lying, all right. And, and what is the lie? That the Lord talked to him. 
Yeah, he, he's saying that their God, the Lord, is on his side. And that he's been, he's been directed by their God to come and, and destroy them. So when this kind of a person's lips are moving, they're lying. I, I mean, you, you, just, you just got to um, assume this. This is the kind of thing that Jesus was talking about when he said we need to be wise as serpents and innocent as dove in regard to, in regard to evil, you see. And don't ever make the mistake of thinking, oh, well, you know, this is, man, that was really deceitful and wicked what happened back there to, to Hezekiah back there. But in your, in your mind, you're thinking, oh, that, that couldn't be like around us. The enemy wouldn't work that way. <laughs> Craig? I suppose also maybe it could be a deceiving spirit. And you know, God can tell someone to do something that sounds so good and prosperous, but it's only meant for their destruction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, of course he's going to interpret it, go up and destroy it, but he didn't say he'd succeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we know that, um, for instance, from wicked king Ahab, he hated Micaiah the prophet, and because Micaiah spoke the truth. But he, um, um, and, and the Lord, you know, we're kind of given that background scene where a, a, the Lord sent a deceitful spirit to Ahab because God wanted to kill him. And, uh, and that's what he did. And some of that could still be going on here too. So, Jessica, are we dropping sig Wi-Fi signals here? I think we're on now. Okay, so we think we're on here to... It is on, okay, so if there was interruption, sorry, it's like... It's the internet. It's the internet. We blame the evils of the internet. But So we're at verse 25 of Second Kings 18 the, and the life of, of Hezekiah. So um, then, Eli, verse 26, Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah and Shebna and Joah, said to the Rav Shaka, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. Do not speak to us in the language of Judah within the hearing of the people who are on the wall. They didn't, they didn't want the people to hear what all these evil lies. But the Rabshaka said to them, Has my master sent me to speak these words to your master and to you, and not to the men sitting on the wall who are doomed with you, to eat their own dung and drink their own urine. And what he's referring there to is the, what happens in a uh, prolonged um, siege of a city, right? And, uh, and, and so that, that's what he's telling them to do. And you also see here what, what is the, the tactic of the enemy. It's fear, right? Fear. I was thinking too when I was watching the movie about Churchill, last night that there's a lot of things there's a lot of things in Churchill's life that you can learn from and but um, there's one huge difference between um, the enemy Hitler that Churchill faced and our enemy and that is that our enemy is defeated okay He's defeated. He, he, uh, and furthermore, uh, we'll see this in, in Jeremiah a little bit later in the worship service, but um, not only is he defeated, Satan, of course this would have been true of Hitler too, but Satan is absolutely subject to the sovereignty of God. Can't make a move, can't make a move. So is this guy here. All of this stuff is, is going. So when the enemy comes and says, you're doomed, well, that's not true. You see, then the Rabshaka stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah, hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you out of my hand. Do not let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord by saying, the Lord will surely deliver us. And this city will not be given into the hand 
of the king of Assyria, do not listen to Hezekiah. For thus says the king of Assyria, make your peace with me and come out to me. Now check this out. And come out to me. Then each one of you will eat of his own vine and each one of his own fig tree. And each one of you will drink the water of his own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, uh, a land of olive trees and honey, that you may live and not die. Do not listen to Hezekiah when he misleads you by saying, the Lord will deliver us. You see that. So this is classic Satan at work. You know, come on, just eat of the apple. Come on, just... You'll be like God. Come on, do, you know, do what I say. I'll go. What he'll do, what he would do is slaughter them if they, if, they, if they went out to him, right? But these are the lies that are coming at him. And you can expect this kind of a thing to happen in our, in our day, right? In, in, anywhere that you as a genuine Christian, any place that a, a genuine believer a uh, child of God is standing for the Lord, there's going to be these kind of accusations coming from the enemy. It's going to happen, right? Guaran- guaranteed. Has any of the gods of the nations ever delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Well, the answer to that question is, well, you got a point there. No. Every, every single land or nation or city that Assyria went up against, they they wiped them out, right? Their gods didn't deliver them. Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharaim, Hena, and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of the lands have delivered their lands out of my hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? So, and he's saying yeah, it's gonna, what makes you think it's going to be any different here, right? What's gonna, how's that going to be any different? But the people were silent and answered him not a word, for the king's command was, do not answer him. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, and Shebna, the secretary, Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him the words of the Rabshaka. Um, here is a, a point to note. Um, it's wisdom. Hezekiah had told the people, don't answer it. That's not a bad strategy, okay? Because um, you are not going to... Well, like if... If anybody was going to answer him after he's making these accusations, if anybody was going to answer him, what would you have said? I mean, what would they have said? be like um, are you are you going to tell him well tell us a little more how, how do we know that you're going to give us these things or whatever it might be but you're entering into negotiations with this with the devil right it's not going to not going to work so they go and they tell king hezekiah As soon as King Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, Shebna the secretary and the senior priest, covered with sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos. Now this is radically different than what you see in the days of Jeremiah. These kings and everybody, they mocked Jeremiah. But here, Hezekiah, he, know, he knows Isaiah is God's prophet. So he sends to Isaiah. They said to him, thus says Hezekiah, this day is a day of distress, of rebuke, and of disgrace. Children have come to the point of birth, and there's no strength to bring them forth. It may be that the Lord your God heard all the words of Rabshakeh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent, to mock the living God and will rebuke the words that the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Okay, asking Isaiah to pray for them. When the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, Isaiah 
said to them, this is great, say to your master, thus says the Lord, do not be afraid because of the words that you've heard with which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him so that he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land and I will make him fall by the sword in his own land. Say, okay, so now it continues here. The Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria fighting against Libna, for he heard that the king had left Lachish. So Rabshakeh pulls off for a while. That's the rumor, I guess. Now the king heard concerning Terhaka, king of Cush. Behold, he has sent out to fight against you. So he sent messengers to Hezekiah. All right. And basically, it's kind of like, now I've got to pull off here for a minute, but, all right, thus you shall speak to him, do not let your God in whom you trust deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you've heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands, devoting them to destruction, and shall you be delivered? And he re replays it. Have the gods of the nations delivered them, the nations that my fathers destroyed, Gozen, Haran, Rezef, people of Eden who were in Telassar. Where is the king of Hamath, Arpad, king of, and so on. You know, where are they? Well, they're, they're wiped out. That's his departing words. All right, all right. So, Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Let's see here, let me back up a second. So when he, when he sends messengers to Hezekiah, apparently they bring it in letter form, is that right? So Hezekiah gets this letter saying that from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. That, that's really a remarkable thing. Okay, so um, to, to take this letter, you know, and he goes up to the temple and he, he lays it there somewhere, right? And basically he's saying, here it is, Lord. And you see in Hezekiah, uh, the realization that what's really being um, attacked here is God himself. Right, he he. That's what he's primarily. Uh, that that's why he takes the letter. Lord, here's what this guy is saying about about you. Right. <clears throat> Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, "O Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth." Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid, they have, it's like, they have laid waste the nations and their lands, and they have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, Therefore, they were destroyed. So now, O Lord, our God, save us, please, from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, O Lord, are God alone. And so it sounds a lot like Moses um, here, where it is, it's the glory of God that is the main thing that, uh, that's important to him. I think that this section of scripture, just these verses here with Hezekiah, taking this matter to the Lord, spreading out the letter and so forth. I think that's some really good scripture to, to counsel somebody with that, okay, you've got this evil person oppressing you and attacking you and so forth. And it's like, this would be something to do. And you know, a lot of times anymore in our day, it comes in an email, right? It comes in an email, these wicked things. So it'd be a really good exercise, I think. Well, you print out that email and then you take it just between you and the Lord and you, you spread it out before him and say, Lord, here it is. This is what this guy is saying, mm -hmm. right? 
This is what this is what he's doing, and uh, and then call on him to act because ultimately those attacks on any of God's people are attacks against him. It's they hate us because they hate Christ, right? See that's that's where it's at. So um, so but this is a ama- an amazing thing. I mean this is real drama. Only it's true, right? And uh, and Isaiah is going to give Hezekiah an answer here. So.